You will notice by now that every lesson in the Hebrew course has an assignment. And you might be puzzled as to how to complete these assignments. And that's okay, it's not entirely clear, and I'd like to help walk you through that. You'll notice here that we're asked to analyze Hosea 1 verse 4. And this is the table then that you're asked to complete to do that. So here you see the text, just two words from Hosea 1 4, Vayomer Yafeh. This is the divine name. And so now in these boxes, you're asked to identify each of the parts of speech that occur in this word from right to left. So starting from the right, we have the Vav conversive, which is a conjunction. So I'm going to type that in. I'm going to use the plus sign to indicate that there's more here. And the more here is that there's a verb. This is a conjunction and a verb. And I'm going to identify this verb as a, a prefix form. Uh, it's the kale stem and it's third masculine singular. So that's all you need to do for the verb. Then you come to this next uh, spot in the table, and here you're asked to give the stem. So I'm going to switch my keyboard now to Hebrew, and I'm going to identify the stem as uh, Aleph, Mem, and Resh. Now I can make that a little larger, and Hebrew always shows better in the Times New Roman font. And then the last box in the table here, I'm going to give a translation of that word. So I'm going to translate this as and, oops, I got to switch to English again, and he said. Then we have here uh, the same thing. So we're going to look at this word. And here we only have uh, one part of speech. That's a noun. It happens to be a proper noun, but uh, you don't need to identify that here. So it's a noun. However, with every noun, you do need to tell me it's function in the sentence. Is it a subject? Is it an object? Or is it a predicate nominative? And you can see these, uh, uh, you can see all these different functions in the, uh, in the website uh, here, which I'm sure you're very familiar with seeing. Uh, simply search for uh, noun function here. And right there it is. And you can read all about that. At any rate, so you're going to put the noun function in here. And this one happens to be the subject of the verb said. And you can just use English letters for that. Then there's nothing to put in this box because it's not a verb, so you don't need to identify the stem. And then here, you're going to, again, give a translation of what you see there. And so we're just going to use the four English letters. Then you're going to come down to here, and you're going to give a uh, translation of this entire verse. So now here you're going to say, and Yahweh said. And obviously there's more to the verse, but at this point we're just translating these. And then you're done with that. And again, I'll call your attention to these notes up here, because these notes are going to be very helpful to you. They're uh, hints and links that I've uh, put up here to assist you in your analysis down here. But once you have this table filled out, uh, typically, there will be more questions down here that you'll need to answer. This one doesn't happen to have them. Uh, however, if I go to the next page, you see this here. And then here are some more questions that you'll need to answer. But basically, that's how you fill these tables out in the, uh, uh, in the, in the first box. You put the uh, parts of speech. If it's a verb, you put the stem and then a rough translation. Part of speech, stem, but only for verbs. This isn't a verb, so this is blank. And then the translation. Then you translate the entire verse in this last box down here. So that's all there is there's to it.